Hi everyone, I'm Ashley with Atlassian and I'm excited today to have Guy Pajarni, the president and founder of Sneak with us today. Welcome Guy. Thanks for having me, it's great to be here. So talk to me a little bit about the integrations between Sneak and Bitbucket. Um, from a security standpoint, what do you do to help secure our products um, and other products around the world? Uh, for sure. So, so we connect to a variety of places within the world of, uh, of Bitbucket. Uh, probably easiest to understand is, is Bitbucket pipelines. So Snake as a whole, what we do is we help you find and fix vulnerabilities in sort of open source dependencies and containers. Um, and so kind of the first uh, uh, question or sort of area that comes up is the notion of like being able to, to run the test or run the question within, within the pipeline. Uh, and specifically, we integrate very elegantly within Bitbucket Pipeline to make it easy for you to first capture, so run the test and be able to remember which dependencies are you using uh, and allowing you to sort of, you know, over time track vulnerabilities in them and uh, when those come out, uh, as well as be able to apply some policies. Now, we'll get back to this, breaking the build can be quite disruptive, so you can make those policies within Bitbucket Pipeline uh, only be for the really severe cases, like there's a critical vulnerability you know, you cannot pass it, that it justifies stopping everything and being able to then, you know, go off and address it because it's a truly severe vulnerability. Uh, on a slightly more refined element in the daily lives of developers, we connect to, to the Bitbucket repos. So we can connect to the repositories themselves uh, and expand out to see uh, which dependency files are in there. So are there, you know, package JSON files there, are there POM XML files or others? Uh, build out a dependency graph. You're using these 10 libraries, they use these 100, they use these 1,000 libraries. Um, how do they make it into your system? And then tell you if those are vulnerable right in the repository. Uh, and what that does is, is a few good things. It gives you that visibility as we talked about before. It gives you um, a, a, an immediate test within the pull request that only tests changes. So unlike the build, which would fail if you have a vulnerability as a whole, right. the, the, uh, the pull request tests actually would would truly um, uh, would only fail if this specific change introduces a problem. Uh, so that implies that you can actually uh, uh, apply that test even before you fix any of the other vulnerabilities and stop getting worse. You know, basically not not go any problem. Well, I know from like a debugging standpoint too. If you're having to go hunt, it's like something broke the build. Okay, is it a misplaced semicolon or you used a you know a dash instead of a, like some twitchy thing, you've got a misplaced parentheses versus an actual vulnerability. So that's huge. How much time is that saving? And then that could be whether it's, you know, obviously when you're connected directly to the repo, that makes it significantly easier. But how much time does that save? I feel like that saves a ton of time on debugging. Uh, it, it does. So it saves a, a ton of time. First of all, it, it, it raises the fact that it even happened. So what happens yeah. with builds is because you're so afraid to build them, legitimately, they're very disruptive to break the build. You yeah. just don't alert. And then you route that information somewhere in the side and nobody ever looks at it. So uh, connecting directly into the Bitbucket UI allows us to provide much better uh, interface, you know, much better interaction with the developer, allows you to present things that are informative without failing. Yeah. Um, and what we've recently done is we've also added support to the Code Insights uh, 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 kind of newer set of capabilities, and we can actually really point you straight into the sort of the line, you know, and show you where the problem is, uh, which connects to, to the last uh, piece that we do that's very relevant, which is to automatically fix these problems for you. So when we find, you know, we, we've saved you the time to know that the problem happened, we yep. saved you, you know, to go fish and figure out like you're using A that uses B that uses C and C is vulnerable, not try to figure out how did C ever get into my application. You, you see the path right away. Yeah. And then subsequently, we can actually figure out what minimum change do you need to do to A to make this vulnerability go away, package that up as a, as a fix, you know, a set of code changes and open that request back into your repository. Um, and so all of those are big time savers. Um, they do combine to one last bit, which is this notion of uh, uh, ongoing monitoring. So, you know, we, we saved a bunch of time here about preventing a vulnerability. We can help you fix that vulnerability. And in the world of, uh, of, of known vulnerabilities, you might be using a library that is totally kosher today, and tomorrow a zero day might be disclosed on it. So right. when that happens, we will again open up a fixed pull request straight into your repository, uh, alongside, of course, kind of, you know, whatever Slack notifications or emails that we might send. Once yeah. again, fast response, and sort of save you save you time. It's all about sort of the developer productivity, you know, with developers being in the center of the world, uh, legitimately so these days. Yeah. 
And do you also, how does that work? You know, you mentioned where if let's say a zero day comes out, you automatically open a pull request. Um, you know, how does that work from a notification standpoint where a dev may have already moved on to, you know, another piece of their code or they may have moved on to another project. And so if someone's coming in brand new, how do they know, okay, this is actually a brand new fix or it was previously fixed, but somehow it broke again. Do they go through those same steps or how do you kind of make sure that whoever's coming into the code um, is up to speed? Speed on what's happening with fixes, vulnerabilities, uh, pull requests, etc. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the there's two primary ways. One is the beauty of the Bitbucket uh, kind of APIs is that we can actually track a lot of it without any effort to the developer. So we will track any code changes over time, and we'll keep constant tabs into onto which libraries are are used at any given time. And then when a vulnerability comes along, we'll open that pull request, that fixed pull request automatically, and it will have all the information about the vulnerability and where that dependency is used in your application. Uh, and that's really opened up for the team, not for an individual developer. It's right there, just like all your other code review changes, it will have triggered your build, right? And you see if that succeeded, whatever testing that you had in it. And so, you know, regardless of whether this developer is the person who added the library or someone unrelated at all, they can see the problem, they can see how it got into their application and make a judgment call. Um, yeah. so, so that's really around urgency. Alongside that, of course, we can't forget JIRA. You know, JIRA is really important for tracking issues. It plays a key role in managing historical issues and how do you manage and get them, get that backlog in, but they also play a role over here. If you can't fix the issue right now, or even if it's just for tracking purposes, we can automatically open a JIRA issue for you with, again, all that information so you can relate it and you can track it if you've invested that development time. You can see how, how much faster are you sort of dealing with these types of problems uh, over time. Uh, and, and you can relate it, of course, to sort of other project, other changes that you have yeah. uh, in your application. So both are really, really important. You want to work directly with developers, but you also want to ensure that the product flow uh, is, is well informed and captures it. You know, you don't want developers to just be expected to be heroes uh, to right. keep the system secure. You want it to be a part of their day job. Yeah. I love that. Well, and, and that goes in with, you know, we've moved from DevOps to now DevSecOps and the mentality that you can't just say, oh, I'm going to throw this over the wall. I'm like, I don't know, security, do your thing. And security is going, yeah, but if I can't get into your code and embed the security. So I, I love that where, you know, it just makes it easy, like you're saying, to make it part of their day jobs without, you know, forcing them to learn an entirely new skill set or without forcing them to have to think about all of these things. If, if you've got tools and technology that can automate a lot of those processes for you, that's, that's huge um, to making DevSecOps that nice integrated little, uh, you know, <laughs> acronym that, it, that it's supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. I think fundamentally DevOps is all about having developers be autonomous and make decisions and own the application end to end. And then you can say that and then say, and the application should be secure without also empowering them to, to be secure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a fundamental. If you depend on external security teams, you can't do DevOps. You can't really have autonomous teams, right? And, and if you want developers to, to do it, you need the security teams to change their mindset and succeed by empowering developers yeah. uh, and have the right tools to sort of help those developers embrace it and be able to continue. We expect so much from developers to continue building those applications at pace and keep them secure uh, as they go. So really kind of our job at Sneak and, and, and in Bitbucket uh, is to help make that easy, you know, help make that elegant. And, and these, these different integrations, whether it's pipelines or it's code insights or generally the pull request and the automated and the uh, uh, tracking of the dependencies and, and just the sort of the webhooks and the interactions there all the way to JIRA, uh, by adapting the security testing to the way the developers work, it, they make it seamless, right? They make yeah. it easier for developers to do the right thing. Yeah. So it sounds like you've already released a bunch of really awesome features. Um, I'm not even a developer and I recognize I'm like, oh, that would save so much time debugging uh, the little bit of fiddling that I've ever had to do in HTML. Right. I, I have felt like this much of that pain. So I'm excited about these features and, and this is not even my world. Um, but I have to ask what's coming down. Like what else do you have planned uh, for your Bitbucket integrations? Um, if there's Jira integrations, I'd love to hear what you're kind of thinking about over the next few months. Uh, for sure. So we're, you know, first of all, we're investing a lot. There's, there, there's constant collaboration with users and customers to, to help refine it, right? Sometimes just collapsing the right information uh, within within the sort of the pull request or or adding some bit of information is effective. So we're doing a variety of things. On on the whole, in the pull request, we are 
uh, providing you some information from data we see elsewhere in the ecosystem, uh, telling you how confident can you be in merging this PR. One of the key concerns is, hey, here's, a, here's an upgrade that I've made. Um, like, you know, would it break my application if I change it? We get the luxury of being able to see many, many customers sort of make those, uh, uh, make those changes, and we can share that knowledge to you to say, well, this seems like a safe upgrade. You can go on. So you can merge that with the security risk you're addressing. Um, the second thing that we're doing is, is investing in the JIRA workflow, and we're, we're giving you uh, both sort of practices, uh, but also some automation to help you uh, sort of drip the, dependence, the, the uh, security vulnerabilities into your sprint. And this is something we've learned from our customers. Our customers, really the ones that are most successful, merge and ensure that in every sprint, they have some, some, uh, some security or some vulnerability remediations. So on our end, you know, a lot of what we do is to help you prioritize, help you find those vulnerabilities that are most impactful for you to address and have the best ROI. So sometimes it's the security risk and the ease of remediation. Bucket those two along with your own sort of asset classification and be able to tell you kind of what's, uh, what's at the top. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and so we're, we're doing all of those work, uh, all, all of that work, uh, and specifically within Bitbucket, we've built uh, a new uh, Connect app, uh, and, and that opens up a whole world of other sort of UI integrations, all aimed again to sort of make that sort of seamless, beautiful user experience uh, within the Bitbucket uh, developers surroundings. So they don't need to work hard, they just have the information about the vulnerability, about its severity, about how to address it right there without needing to sort of look left and right. And they could just get on with their job while while building secure applications. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited about those new features coming down. That that also seems great. At, you know, thinking about how to prioritize the backlog, thinking about reducing tech debt in a more strategic way um, when it comes to security. So it sounds like there's some really awesome integrations uh, that we have and that are coming out in the near future with Sneak. So, Guy, thank you so much for chatting with me about Bitbucket and Sneak, and uh, we look forward to seeing everything go live. Mm -hmm.